Bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur Oak Invest à nouveau. Aujourd'hui, on se trouve chez Kaiko avec Clara qui est Head of Research chez Kaiko. Euh, L'interview se passera en anglais. Vous aurez bien sûr les sous-titres en français juste là. On voulait faire cette interview en anglais dans un premier temps parce que tu es d'origine anglophone, il me semble. Euh, et en plus de ça, du coup, vu que, comme tu l'as dit juste avant, euh, il y a énormément de données qui se mélangent, de, de mots qui se mélangent. Et on vient par faire du franglais, donc au final, il vaut mieux le faire en anglais. Just to start, Uh, could you please present yourself and present what Kaiko does? Yeah, sure. My name is Clara. I am from the United States originally, and I've been working at Kaiko now for five years. Kaiko is a digital asset data provider, um, but we also have a research arm. I lead Kaiko's research team. Uh, so today we publish five different research products. We have two newsletters, two reports, and we're actually just launching an analyst call. So essentially what I do all day is I analyze crypto markets using our data. What, like, what do you have to study before to get to this point? Well, I think the good thing about crypto is that most people, there's no major or studies, university studies that you can do to really understand crypto markets. It's very much about doing your own research. That's actually one of the unofficial mantras of crypto is do your own research. So it's all about finding a topic within the crypto industry that interests you um, and then exploring that further. So for me personally, that's exactly what I did. I didn't study um, anything actually related to finance or economics or crypto. Rather, I started just reading about it in my free time, and then I found Kaiko as a company, applied here, and moved to Paris. You're focusing on data with Kaiko and with your work, but does it really give a competitive edge to people? So, because right now we can, so you know, when the market goes up or down, we basically try to uh, justify this market moving. So, for example, yeah, the rates are higher, or for example, then Tesla sold their Bitcoin or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so we are trying to justify it. So by whatever events happen, but does data with analyzing this data actually gives you a competitive edge while trading or analyzing markets or just understanding what is going on? So absolutely. Uh, Kaiko's specialty is our tick level trade and order book data. So one of the most powerful use cases you can have with this data is back testing a, tra a trading strategy. And that typically applies to quant traders. Um, especially in crypto markets where markets ch are, are constantly evolving and shifting, you really need access to extremely granular market data in order to build a trading strategy. So from a quant perspective, yes, tick level data is absolutely essential for having a strong um, and robust trading strategy. Okay, and so what kind of data do you present to your clients today? So everything related to financial markets for crypto assets, this is happening on two types of venues. First is centralized exchanges. These are exchanges like Binance and Coinbase, where you'll have uh, millions of transactions that happen every day for thousands of different cryptocurrencies. So we collect every single tick level trade um, and also order book information. This is the bids and asks, and you can think of this as sort of the underlying supply and demand for an asset. So that's on centralized exchanges, but we also actually collect data from decentralized markets. This is a lot different than what you would see on a centralized exchange. It functions separately. We actually collect our market data from DEXs directly from the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so only Ethereum today? So today we only cover Ethereum, but we're expanding very soon onto Avalanche and Binance Smart Chain. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. And some also some layer twos like Polygon. Okay, okay, makes sense. And so when you collect this data, how does it actually happen? Is it via different IP APIs or, uh, for example, Binance or Coinbase just, just give you their data? How does it work? Yes, yeah, so actually this data is public and freely available. This is very different from what you would see in traditional finance where these all these barriers in order to access market data. In crypto, the data is free. So we collect it directly from APIs provided by the exchange. We today cover more than 100 centralized exchanges. So think of that as 100 separate pipes connecting all of these exchanges. We collect the data, we normalize it, we clean it, and then we redistribute it through a single access point. Yeah, because we were thinking about this right before that. So for example, how do you filter, for example, wash trading or this kind of stuff? Do you actually do it? So on the research team, we've done some analyses on wash trading. However, our clients, a lot of them themselves are doing their own analyses. So what we do is we are an agnostic data provider. We'll give you the data and you can draw your own conclusions. Okay. So we're not filtering um, for our clients. Okay, so basically what you do is just, you collect all the data, you try to sort it out, mm -hmm. and then they do their work afterwards. Exactly. So what type of clients do you have today, for example? So we have several categories of clients. I would say the most prominent are the traders. This is everything from 
your quant trader. We have some smaller trading firms. We have some large asset managers that are managing crypto assets on behalf of their clients. We also have a lot of researchers. We work with more than 100 academic institutions who are using our data to study um, market structure for cryptocurrencies. We work with a lot of private research firms who are doing their own independent crypto analysis. And then we also work with some crypto native companies. We actually uh, partner with a few oracles. So we are actually publishing Kaiko's data on chain, which is a really cool type of delivery channel for our data. Um, and then finally, we have a lot of just crypto startups that need data. Essentially with crypto, you need data for everything because so much of the industry relies on price movements and what's actually happening at the asset level. Yeah, I think you partnered with Beef Network. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we, we know them, they're cool guys. So yeah, yeah. when nice. I saw the partnership, I was like, oh yeah, they yeah. are part of And they, they like Paris as well. Yeah. They have one of the guys who's French in their team. So yeah. so yeah. And so when you're talking about that, all your most of your clients are institutional. Yes, exactly. Institutional level. But then, on the other hand, today you publish your newsletter and different analysis. For mm -hmm. example, uh, I know that you did one for Luna, for USDC, and for many other stuff, for example. Um, and so, this analysis, they are available for free to everyone. You basically publish them on your website, on your Twitter. Um, but what does it bring to you? Is it, is it like a showcase of your uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. or is it more like just trying to reach retail investors as well? So it's actually targeted, we're a B2B company, so all of our research is all towards the goal of targeting our B2B clients. Um, but our research essentially provides use cases for Kaiko's data from a research perspective, but also highlighting what kind of data types we offer for quant traders that aren't necessarily using our data for actionable insights, but they want to get an idea of what we're showing. Yeah, okay, it's basically a free sample, like when you, mm -hmm. when you go to an ice cream shop and you just get a scoop of an ice yeah. cream, so you know what your you're ordering afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think we also, on the research side, we're providing real value in terms of analysis. Kaiko has some of the most unique data sets in crypto, and that's actually our liquidity data. Very few other data providers offer market depth, price slippage, the bid-ask spread, and this is stuff that the research team analyzes, um, which is very complicated to access if you don't have like a big company collecting order book data. It's terabytes of data. It's really complicated to work with. Okay, I got it. And so Kaiko was founded in 2014, right? Yes. So recently you did um, a fundraise, mm -hmm. which was Series A, B? Series B. Series B. And so you've been through different market cycles. Yes, so exactly. So bear market, bull market, so and you actually fundraise in a bear market, so congrats. Yeah. Um, but then, so you have been collecting data during all the cycles. And today during bear market, we tend to have this complete degeneracy basically of data. Yep. We, we have so many things going on new projects launching, um, basically people just trading from everywhere and the volumes are really high. So, and then during the bear market, it's kind of calm and people trade less and they tend to basically hold their coins. Which cycle gives you the most conclusive data, which would be the most useful for your clients? So I think that crypto markets operate in regimes. Market structure is constantly evolving. In traditional financial markets, these regimes can last like five years or plus. In crypto, I argue that market structure changes year to year, sometimes even month to month. So it's really the most recent data that has the most value. Um, and so that's why at Kaiko, like if you're a trader, you're constantly needing a new supply of data in order to recalibrate your trading, mm -hmm. uh, your trading models. Um, in terms of which market regime I prefer, I mean, of course, bull markets. I think bull markets <laughs> everyone prefers. But what I think is very powerful about Kaiko and our product is even in a bear market, you need data. Um, and you need data for risk management. That's another powerful use case of Kaiko is essentially making sure that you have the capital that you need to withstand a bear market. You can only make these predictions using data and quantitative analytics. Okay. And so during events like FTX or Luna, you have people basically begging for information because yeah. they want to understand what's happening. So during these cycles, are you like overwhelmed and you have way more to do than on a daily basis or how does it work? I mean, on the research team, the busiest week of my entire time at Kaiko was the FTX collapse. And then the second busiest week was last week when we had the Silvergate collapse and the mm. banking crisis. So I would say anytime there's a big market movement on the research team, we're in action. That's our time to shine. We use all of Kaiko's data to try and make sense of what's happening in the markets. Yeah, so you have this interpretation side as well, which is really important. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand it. Exactly. Okay. And so as you've been in data for a long time, as I said before, um, 
how do you think the data and the collection and usage of this data will evolve? Will AI replace all the traders at some point and just collect your data and use it? Or how do you think data will impact the markets in the long term? So that's, I think, a good point. So Kaiko today, we offer our raw data, that's trade and order book, but we also apply intelligence to our data sets. We have a whole quantitative analytics business unit that sure, AI in the future could technically replicate a lot of what we do, but for now we are still applying a lot of intelligence to our data. We have our own methodology for implied volatility, for value at risk. We have an exchange ranking, which uses 25 separate parameters to rank crypto exchanges. This is the additional value that we provide beyond just the raw data, which at the end of the day is public. And so anyone could technically start collecting, but that's not the value that we provide. Mm. And so the data that you provide, you know, in, in crypto, we always have something new coming in. Every cycle marks like a new beginning of something. So we had G5, we had NFTs, we had all this liquidity providing things. Which area will be predominant in a longer term, do you think? Will, will there be something new or something that already exists that will be more important in the future? Um, I think it depends. I mean, I would say, especially during a bull market, you're sort of getting waves of enthusiasm. One month it's NFTs, the next month it's DeFi. Um, I think a lot of people are paying close attention to DeFi, especially in a, bull, in a bear market. DeFi has sort of proven that it's working as functioned. Um, besides the occasional hack, DeFi is really a powerful use case uh, showing the power of, crypt of blockchain technology more than just the underlying, I guess, the cryptocurrencies themselves. Yeah, and I also, also think that there will always be like this um, euphoria around new layer ones or layer twos which are coming out, mm -hmm. which are, allow more scalability. So I think mm -hmm. DeFi has its role and it will stay here for a long time. Yes. And another thing that we're all paying attention to is what's happening with Ethereum and the layer twos. I think that's a lot of very powerful, I guess, use cases for faster technology that enables more onboarding and faster transaction speeds. So that's been mm. one of the biggest roadblocks for crypto today is that it can be very slow to use these blockchain networks, but with networks like Polygon, um, we're seeing a lot of improvement. Yeah, and another thing I'm, I'm thinking about it right as we talk, because you, we're talking about layer ones, DeFi, Ethereum. How does Bitcoin translate into that? Is Bitcoin a huge part of your um, data analysis or is it only a fraction? Because Basically, what you can analyze is only like the flows of, of Bitcoin from, mm -hmm. for example, from wallets to exchanges, etc. But uh, otherwise, there is no DeFi on Bitcoin. So you basically can only analyze transactions, right? Yeah, exactly. So on the DeFi side, we're in the DeFi data types. It's all Ethereum based, whether that's a lending and borrowing protocol like Aave or a decentralized exchange like Uniswap. We're focusing most of our resources on collecting on-chain data from the Ethereum blockchain. We're not focused on Bitcoin right now. Yeah, makes sense. And so the last question is the one that we ask everyone who comes to our interview or mm -hmm. uh, basically a podcast or whatever you want to call it. Um, we ask everyone, every person that comes, in which areas do you invest yourself? So we know that you work in crypto, So, yeah. but we have people who work in crypto who, inv in, who invest in wine, who invest in real estate or stocks as well. So what are the areas that you are interested in? What are your favorite investments, basically? Which so, is not financial advice, obviously. <laughs> no but... financial advice. No, that's <laughs> fine. I understand. Um, so I still invest in crypto. I would say I focus on the top cryptocurrencies. I'm not a big altcoin investor. Um, and that's simply because, I mean, it takes a lot of time. You need to do a ton of research in order to make smart altcoin investment decisions. Um, but then outside of crypto, I invest mostly in the S&P 500. I would say I've tried before in picking like hot stocks and it never really works out. So I'm just going to focus with the safest bet. Game which stop is, and, and stuff. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I, those days are behind me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Clara, for coming here. And we have a final word to people about Kaiko, about yourself, whatever you want. Um, I would say that the past few months have definitely been tough for crypto, the industry as a whole. Um, and it's going to be tough, definitely for the next few months. But the parts of crypto that are why we're here in the first place, which is the underlying technology, have proven that they have worked. And what I mean by that is DeFi protocols and everything related to the networks themselves. And it shows a powerful use case specifically for the financial industry. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much.